we have <laughs> one party who ignores the climate crisis altogether, and the other one who's using it as a political wedge. We need to unite you prop Canadians. Up. I just have to say that. <laughs> Zing. Get her, Vashi. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. Vashi Kapalos interviewed a panel of MPs as she refereed a discussion about the carbon tax and the recent motion that passed to ask Trudeau to host a televised discussion. While she did a great job at moderating, she didn't miss an opportunity to repeatedly take a dig at the NDP and remind them that they are responsible for this whole mess. Let's take a look. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is facing more pressure today to sit down with Canada's premiers after a Tory opposition motion passed the House of Commons with NDP support. The motion calls on Trudeau to urgently heed the call from several of the country's premiers to sit down and hash out alternatives to the current carbon pricing system. The Prime Minister's response to date, he already met with premiers when the pollution pricing plan was first drafted back in 2016. Let's bring in MPs to debate whether that meeting should take place. With me here in studio, Leah Taylor-Roy is a Liberal MP representing Ontario. Next to her is Laurel Collins, the NDP's environment critic. And next to her is Andrew Shear, the Conservatives' House Leader. Hi to all of you. Thank you very much for making the time. We have a bit of a different seating order just for everybody who's used to watching this because uh, of arrivals and arrival time. So it, don't read anything into it, everybody. But uh, I'll start with the government and with Ms. Taylor Roy. Thanks for making the time. So before we get into this, I have to say that I was surprised that the NDP actually voted with the Conservatives and the Bloc to have uh, this televised discussion to discuss potential repealing of the carbon tax or other options with the premiers of the different provinces. Why am I surprised? Because a couple of weeks ago, they voted confidence on the basis of the carbon tax. So it's a very bizarre 180 that they've done here. I'm old enough to remember when it was uh, Justin Trudeau, the leader of the third party at the time, harshly criticizing then Prime Minister Stephen Harper for not meeting frequently enough with the premiers. It was a main line of attack during the 2015 campaign. Mm -hmm. Why is it any different now? I don't think it's different, but I think this particular meeting that's being requested is being done completely for political purposes. I think that, you know, if the premiers were really serious about um, battling climate change and reducing greenhouse gases, they come forward with some suggestions. As of right now, there's been nothing put forward. And as we all know, the, the federal backstop program is in place because the provinces failed to put in programs on their own. So it was agreed upon to have these programs. It is... Um, shown to be not only the, the most efficient from a, um, an economic perspective, but also the most affordable when you include, of course, the Canada carbon rebates. So everybody, every premier who is saying there has to be a more affordable, better way to still reach our targets is what, completely not basing any of that on fact, completely wrong? Because that includes one of your Liberal colleagues, Premier Andrew Fury. And that's the magical question, Vashi. The magical question I have is, why did they send a liberal backbencher instead of Stephen Gilbeau? Right. This is this is not a minister, not a member of cabinet, not a parliamentary secretary. This is just member of parliament. So it's interesting that they're sending her up against opposition House leader Andrew Scheer, former Conservative Party leader yeah. Andrew Scheer, former Speaker of the House Andrew Scheer, and... One of Jagmeet's now emerging new top people. Um, and uh, it's it's just interesting that they threw her to, to the wolves here. Um, not not really that smart right after this motion. Because the whole point of this motion is to get these MP or sorry, these premiers on television with Justin Trudeau in order to have a discussion about this. Now, if you're Justin Trudeau, there's no way you're going to do that because this is a setup. <laughs> this is a setup to, you know, lump all of the problems with the carbon tax and affordability all at Justin Trudeau. He would get destroyed in that type of a arena that is set up. And I'm guessing the NDP is just looking at that as an opportunity to, again, further distance themselves from uh, from the liberals and 
it's it's funny how quickly that they've chosen to start distancing themselves from Justin Trudeau. Yeah, pretty quickly after those three NDP MPs decided that they won't be running again. Oh, yeah. It was like immediate. Completely immediate. This is, you know, getting my spidey sense going. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, as, as it relates to affordability, yeah, you have literally 70% of Canadians, if not more. You have seven premiers that have stepped forward and saying, you know, we're, we're done. Our, our constituents are railing against us and we're going to advocate on their best interests or be politically destroyed. So, you know, it's like everybody is wrong but me. That's the that's the approach that the Liberals are taking. Sure, they're, they're, um, I think people are hopeful. I think premiers are hopeful. But as we heard Scott Moe say, he, he's looked at all the alternatives. There's nothing more affordable. If we just Well, realize, that's on the industrial side. To be fair, he's talking about industrial carbon price, not a consumer one. But it's all one program. You can't separate the two because the, the industrial price is linked in to the price on pollution, to the consumer price. And I think that you can't really take these apart because it works as a whole. And all of our estimates are based on both parts of that program. Well, that's not entirely true, because when you look at the Canadian Climate Institute, just to follow up on that, Ms. Taylor Roy, uh, which recently did an outside analysis, 30% uh, of the reductions were attributed to the cons the, uh, the industrial side, while only 8 to 9% were attributed to the consumer side. So they were able to break it apart to base their analysis. Why can't you just remove the consumer side and either strengthen the industrial side or do something else? Because the, the, the industrial side is based off the price of pollution that is put on the consumer side. What? What are you talking about, lady? The 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 industrial base side is based off of what's on the consumer base side. That that doesn't really make sense. Yeah, I can't think of any way that that would make sense, because I mean, the conservatives have been arguing for the longest time that what Canadians are paying for their groceries, for gas, for heating, etc., it's because the industry is being taxed with a carbon tax and then it's being tacked on and canadians are also being taxed with a carbon tax so Cana canadians as individuals are getting like double whammy hit well and that's the thing right and that's what their their chart their price on pollution their rebate program doesn't take into account but a liberal wouldn't admit that no of course not because that would mean that they're oh what's the word oh, wrong, wrong. <laughs> so you know, th this is the this is the important part about this carbon tax, um, and and it's why the liberals are saying, oh well, you know, it's just it's pennies on the dollar. What's the big deal? It's it's not pennies on the dollar. You tell that to Canadian families who are having to use a food bank for the first time. And it's let, let's just say it was pennies on the dollar. It's pennies on the dollar in literally every single dollar that you spend. So that's hundreds and thousands of dollars over the course of a year. And most of that, you're not getting back. You're not getting a carbon uh, price rebate for the extra inflated cost that is on industry that is then passed down to you. And that's what the conservative main argument is. Canadians don't see that. You get carbon price, you know, based on what they estimate you spend on fuel, based on your economic demographic, what you spend on heating. And, you know, that's... That's basically it. So, you know, for them to say, oh, you're better off. Yeah. If you literally bought nothing at the store, if you didn't eat, if you didn't buy toothpaste, if you didn't buy toilet paper, you didn't buy anything and just sat at home. In the dark. In the dark. <laughs> drove your car around for no reason whatsoever and then didn't and then, you know, heated your home. Congratulations. So this works together. And if you, if you don't have um, the population moving forward, if you don't have consumers also changing their behavior, you're not going to get to where you need to go. I think this is all about price signals. And as we've seen, you know, 250 economists signed on saying this is the best way to do it. And in fact, both members who are here with me support this program. So I don't understand. Okay, let, let's yeah. bring in your colleague, Mr. Sure. Scherer, because I think what Ms. Taylor Roy is alluding to is the fact that your party actually actually hasn't unequivocally said or denounced or said you'd remove the industrial side of the carbon tax. You've focused solely on the consumer side. So will you? Well, uh, if I could just address a few of the uh, pieces of misinformation that we just heard from my Liberal colleague. 
you absolutely can separate them. The only, the only reason why they're linked is because that's how the government linked the program. You talked about, she talked about me already having, uh, the prime minister has already met with the premiers. That was in 2016. None of the premiers who were at that meeting in 2016 hold office today. And by the way, the program that they were briefed about from Justin Trudeau back in 2016 had a cap on the price on, car, on, on the carbon tax that he's since blown through. He's on his way to quadrupling the carbon tax. We know the carbon tax adds to the cost of everything while displacing jobs and investments to other countries who, by the way, are increasing their emissions. The government of India, Prime Minister Modi, just celebrated the fact that India has increased its coal production to over a billion tons. It's gone up 70 percent in just Does 10 that years. Does absolve us that, from doing things is, to reduce our emissions? That is well. Justin Trudeau is saying no to exporting our LNG, which would help lower emissions. So this well, is the, it this is the backwards Canada, approach. Though, but respectfully. The, the, the point is, if, if the name of the game, if the goal is to reduce global emissions, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions worldwide, then Canada absolutely should be exporting more of what will help do that. And okay. we have a government here who says there's no business case for LNG, while other countries are filling the market while they're raising the cost on Canadian oh, consumers. And I'll follow up with that in a second. But back to back to my initial question, which was substantively about whether or not a conservative government would keep the industrial price on carbon, which isn't free for consumers, right? Taxes on companies are often, most of the time, if not always, transferred to consumers. Would your party keep that portion of the tax in place? Okay. So Andrew Shear brings up some really good points here. Number one, that yes, you absolutely can separate the industrial carbon tax from the consumer one. Number two, um, Trudeau was like, oh, we've already met with the premiers, you know, back in 2016. Yeah, eight years ago. And, you know, what does it say? What does it say that this carbon tax isn't working to reduce emissions when they've said, oh, well, I guess it's not doing what we, what we need to. I know, let's dramatically increase this by a factor of four. Maybe that'll do the job. Like, that's the only reason that they would need to be, quote unquote, increasing this. And the problem is, is you're seeing all these recalls come in for the electric vehicles that Canadians don't really have a lot of confidence that the, the electric vehicles are the way to go. And that's not to say that the electric vehicles are built with such poor quality. It's they're still new. Well, and... There was an article today, I don't recall which newspaper I read it in, but um, that Ford had issued a recall for its vehicles um, because there was a leak in the, uh, I think it was the gas line that could cause the battery to catch fire. Right. So not exactly the most ideal thing that you're dealing with when it comes to electric vehicles. And again, it's just because they're new. They haven't been, forgive the term, burnt in into the auto industry. So like, you know, one of uh, like Ford's electric vehicles, they've only been around for a few years and it takes a while. It takes a good 10 years to, to, to burn new technology and if not more. So now some of you might be saying, well, why is Vashi going so hard at Andrew Shear? So just That's so that job, everybody, <laughs> just so everybody understands her, her job, especially in a panel like this is to take a counter position to each speaker. So if you recall, when she was speaking with the liberals, she was taking a counter position to them in order to ask them the tough questions. And then, and the counter position from her is typically a conservative when it comes to liberals. Then when she talks to Andrew Scheer, she has to take a counter position to him and ask him the hard questions. And at which point she sounds like a liberal. And when she gets to Laurel Collins, who is the NDP MP, she needs to take a counter position to her. So um, this isn't, why is Vashi doing this? It's, she's actually doing exactly what she's supposed to do. And remember, this is what we said before. I don't care if she's hard on the conservatives as long as she's hard on everybody else. Yeah, it that, would be different if she was hard on Andrew Scheer and then was like being all like a cheerleader friendly. yeah for the other two that's that's different but if she's she's doing exactly what she needs to be doing and absolutely. that's why we like vashi absolutely and and the good thing is that some of the the counterpoints that she takes 
um, actually bring out good points. Well, the focus right now is on the on the carbon tax that people see but that's on the not heating bill and the grocery respect. bill. There will be lots of time before, between now and the next election where Canadians can have uh, anal analyze the plan. Justin Trudeau's plan to quadruple the, the carbon tax, to add even more to the cost of a litre of fuel, to make your home heating even more expensive, to drive up the cost of groceries, or our plan to axe the tax and bring those but, prices but down. But it is going to reduce emissions by 8 to 9 percent, Mr. Shear. That's not uh, nothing. Uh, after, and you're you're we, you're you're, you're that, living in a scenario where we export LNG. China and India, let's say, are able to reduce their emissions great. as a result. I they get can. that, Everybody but there's wins. no system in Everybody that. Wins. But there's no. But but our emissions go up. But what authority do we have? But isn't overall? the goal to lower emissions on a global basis? Like like the, if 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 Canada slightly lowers ours by nine percent, but China and India massively increase those. But maybe undoing, there's a way to do both. Undoing what we've done here, yeah. despite all the pain that the Trudeau government's putting Canadians through. I mean, that doesn't yeah. make any sense. And this Maybe idea, you can and walk this idea and that this carbon tax, this idea, the carbon tax is not an environment plan. We have to stop talking about it as if it is. The last time Justin Trudeau hiked the tax on carbon, Canada dropped four spots in the climate change performance index. So it is not working. It's a tax plan, not an okay, environment Okay, we'll get into plan. that in a second because I know Ms. Taylor Roy wants no. to respond, but Ms., I want to go to Ms. Collins because you actually were um, what everyone was watching for when this vote took place yesterday in the House of Commons. Would the NDP support the Conservatives' call for this meeting? And you did. And you also went on to say that the carbon tax, the consumer side of the carbon tax policy is not the be-all, end-all. Two weeks ago when I was asking you for your party's position, you were not clear. Can you be clear? Are you rejecting the consumer side of the carbon tax? So there you go. Um, what Andrew Shear said is not conservative. It's it's just that's what makes sense. Again, the Pareto principle. What is eighty percent of global emissions in the world? Who is that caused by? Well, I know over fifty percent is the U.S., China, and India combined. Right. The, those are the three by a country mile largest polluters in the world. Now the US is slowly coming down, but the problem is that China and India are skyrocketing up. So what what do you do to address the problem? Do you spend a whole bunch of time and effort on a country that accounts for one to 1.5% of global emissions? Or do you look at who are the countries taking up half of all the emissions in the world? And you maybe look at them. Well, and interestingly, they're the three most populated countries. I think you might have just misquoted me. What I said was the Liberals have been treating the consumer carbon tax as the be-all and end-all of climate and policy. And from that that you don't think that it is. And what I'm saying is that we should have a whole suite of climate policies to put forward, including car carbon pricing. But you'll note that... Mr. Shearer did not answer the question about industrial carbon pricing. I did note that, but I'm I, asking you for an answer on the consumer side exactly. of the carbon so, price. And the government does have a full suite of measures in place. Thank you. You know, the, <laughs> the government has watered down their emissions cap, the industrial carbon pricing, the clean uh, electricity regulations, the clean fuel regulations, and they have put up carbon pricing and the consumer side as their silver bullet, as their um, proof that they are credible on climate change. Well, okay, this is very important because the NDP just said, oh, well, the Liberals have watered down all this stuff. Their policies are completely ineffective and their carbon pricing, that's the only thing that they're holding up. Keep that in mind. Well, they buy a pipeline that costs taxpayers $35 billion that we could have put into the full suite of climate solutions that we need. But on carbon pricing, we want to strengthen the industrial carbon pricing system. And we also acknowledge that carbon pricing, consumer carbon pricing, is one of our tools in our toolbox. So you wouldn't get rid of it, to be clear? We have we have not said we would scrap the consumer carbon price. We have never said that. So you that. would keep it as it is? I mean, right now we have a system that really makes the biggest polluters on the industrial side pay less than everyday Canadians. That's not fair. We definitely need to look at our carbon system and make sure that it's fair Canadians. Suncor is paying 14 times less than everyday Canadians for the same pollution. And the bigger question here is why the Conservatives continue to fail to answer if they would scrap the industrial side. This is one of the most critical pieces of climate policy. You said 30%, but it's actually 30 to 48% of our emissions reductions well, come from the industrial side. I just came from the Environment Committee where they voted against bringing the CEOs of the wealthiest 
oil and gas companies I to committee to and, ask and, questions about this. And look, I asked Mr. Shear and I will continue to, pretty much every time he's here, I'm asking him that same question. I, but I, I think it's also fair for me to ask of you the exact position of the NDP. And, and am, I, am I correct to interpret from what you said that you would keep the carbon tax and the plan that the Liberals have for it to increase to $170 a ton by 2030, but you would at the same time increase the industrial side, so you would not lower or get rid of the consumer carbon tax, to be clear on the NDP's position. Love the hypocrisy of the NDP, right? Oh, well, you know, the Conservatives aren't answering this question. You're not answering yours. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> and why are the Conservatives not answering this question? Because that's going to be part of the election pro uh, program, right? It was the same thing why they didn't touch the, uh, the, the subject of immigration. And the NDP's position, well, Suncor, you know, pays 14 times less. Um, I will argue that they pay zero. All of the industrial organizations that, that are taxed end up paying a net of zero for the carbon tax. Why? Because that cost is passed on to the consumers. There you go. And I just, I find it interesting that uh, Collins is kind of arguing, well, oh, we never said that there shouldn't be a, a consumer carbon price. This article is from yesterday, April the 11th, uh, from the Toronto Star. Headline reads, Jagmeet Singh backpedals on consumer carbon levy distances NDP from support for Justin Trudeau's policy. Subheading reads, the federal New Democrats no longer believe a consumer carbon price is necessary to fight climate change, Jagmeet Singh suggested Thursday. So I guess Collins didn't get the memo? Right. Maybe you should uh, attend your your caucus meetings. It's not like your voice could get lost in the shovel. There's only 24 of you. So, but here's the thing. The problem is, is that their platform is far left, or it's supposed to be far left. So they're supposed to be for a carbon tax. But at the same time, they're trying to distance themselves from Justin Trudeau. Yeah, and they're trying to differentiate themselves from the Liberals. Why would I vote NDP if the Liberals are going to do the exact same thing? And for the record, I would never vote NDP. What I've said to you before, and I'll say it to you again, we would strengthen the industrial side. And with the consumer side, if the provinces come to us and have credible alternatives, we are all ears. If, you know, we, we already know that Quebec has a system of their own. If provinces want to come and actually have a credible plan that will meet our emissions targets. It's, Canadians are struggling with the cost of living and the climate crisis, and we need to tackle these it's a, head on. It's a fair saying. point, Ms. Taylor Roy. I, 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 I don't understand, and please help maybe mm -hmm. Canadians understand, why you, your government is so wedded to the consumer side when you see all this opposition. And by the way, it wasn't so wedded when it came to the heating oil in Atlantic Canada, but so wedded to this concept when provinces are saying, okay, we get it, we have to meet the targets. Can we just come to you with some alternatives? Why won't you even entertain that discussion? Yeah. See that zinger from Vashi? Oh, you weren't so wedded to it in Atlantic Canada. Zing! She's right. <laughs> She's right. Because, again, people were suffering. And and they went to their MPs, their MLAs, uh, their their city councillors. Like, Everybody. Ev yeah, any anyone and everyone that they could. And their voices were heard. Now, why is Trudeau ignoring the rest of us? Because his ideology is more important than the pain and suffering of Canadians. Well, and the funny thing is, is that was a like like a fool's errand, what they did, because when you take a look at what happened out uh, out east after they, you know, re reduced their, or eliminated the carbon tax on home heating, um, in terms of seats, it, 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 it did nothing. It, it literally did nothing. Well, and what it is going to do is it's going to show people out west, like Quebec, Ontario, and westward, that... Our government, you know, they will bend, number one, but number two, they'll bend for other people, but not us. So that's going to lose votes as well. We're willing to hear alternatives from the provinces, but remember, Blaine Higgs, you know, he opted into the program a year ago. He's saying now, at the time he said it was a good thing. We've heard Daniel Smith say it made sense. Where he, we, we saw Doug Ford get rid of the cap and trade, but remember one thing, we're talking about affordability. And eight out of ten households receive more money back, especially lower income households. But that's just than the they net. Pay. That's just, that's not taking into account the economic impact yes, when you're referencing the has an economic impact. Officer. Any program has an economic impact, which is exactly why the Conservatives don't talk about their program. If you're committed to fighting climate change, 
tell us what you're going to do. They keep saying technology. Well, technology is it, part of our suite of programs. That's fair, it costs. But we my question to you is about why your government will not entertain alternatives. And, and I, you said you did, but that's not what the prime minister has been saying. He said that the Supreme Court decided we could impose this price on carbon. If you want to come back with your own price on right. carbon, you can. But that's not an alternative to the carbon tax. No. You're, you're not entertaining an alternative. And, I, and, I, and I'm just curious as to why, if in fact the outcome is that the targets could be met. I understand the adherence to the targets, but mm -hmm. if that, if they can get a plan that gets, gets them there, why not? And the answer is, she doesn't know because she's a backbencher. She's just towing the line. And why not? Because let's be real, folks. It's a, it's a revenue generating policy for the Liberals. Oh, of course it is. It costs $200 million just to administer the carbon tax rebate program. Where is that money coming from? Right. And they're trying to say, oh, well, you know, we're fighting climate change. And, and you're going to end up with more money yeah. than you give us. Uh, no, that's not how money works. No. That's not how math works. And uh, like, we're going to show it again. Here's the chart. So what this is, is the five different quintiles of the economic demographics in Canada. And if your box is red, that means you get less money as a result of the carbon tax. Look at it. <laughs> like, look at it. Yeah. Like, what would you say? Almost 80% of that chart is red. Like Alberta, net loss uh, on average of $2,700. Saskatchewan, net loss on average of $1,700. Manitoba, net loss on average of $1,500. Ontario, net loss on average of $1,800. Nova Scotia, $1,500. Prince Edward Island, $1,500. And Newfoundland and Labrador, $1,300. The case is closed on this. But the Liberals continue to lie and lie and lie to Canadians. Eight out of ten Canadians get more back. No, you don't. Because it will take every tool in our toolbox. And right now people are banking on things like CCUS, which may have an impact, which may help. Your government is banking. You spent billions know, but, on it. But, but that's one part of it. We also have to see consumer demand reduced. And we are giving back eight out of 10 families more. So if we go to just an industrial-based system, if we get rid of the price on pollution as part of our program, and it's an integral part of it, then we are saying you will pay more through cap and trade or through industrial output pricing, but you won't get a rebate. Is that what we want at a time of an affordability crisis I'll to stop the rebate? And this is the fear tactics that they use. Yeah, you can't get by without us. There's there's a affordability crisis. We have nothing to do with it, by the way, but there's an affordability crisis. Do you really want us to stop giving you money? No, I want you to stop taking the money away that put us in this crisis in the first place. And for those curious, CCUS, that acronym that they use, is Carbon Catcher Utilization and Storage, right? And here's the thing. You can fight, you, you can fight climate change assuming you believe it, you can fight climate change by a lot of different ways. But the best way to do it is to not punish the people that are actually, you know, the working class citizens of your country. Mr. Shear, I'll ask you on that point, because even putting aside analysis that's been done specific to the consumer carbon tax, the analysis that has been done on technology or sector specific um, regulations to reduce emissions is that it is much more expensive for Canadians. Is that what your government, your, your party, pardon me, if you formed government would do? Like, there, there's been private sector proponents who wanted to uh, uh, engage in projects that would have had lower emissions. There was a famous one in Atlantic Canada that would have uh, harnessed the power of ocean waves with a tidal energy project that couldn't get approval from this federal government. But the focus here the is, is about is, is about having a meeting. that technology too. But, but then, but they didn't allow it to go forward. They didn't allow LNG projects to go forward. They told our allies that there was no business case for it. When we I mean, know that getting LNG, other countries to be fair, off there are some going forward, coal. big ones. But, okay, but it, let, let's focus on the motion that passed. Why won't Justin Trudeau just meet with the premiers? What is he so afraid of? They're not going to ask him Why to Stephen help Harper? them move or to <laughs> put together IKEA furniture. They want to meet with them to put forward alternatives. Basically, what he's saying is that. It, 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 it's a carbon tax or nothing. 
while okay. Canadians are struggling. And if, if, if my Liberal colleague thinks that Canadians are so much better off with this carbon tax, why are there so many Canadians for the first time having to go to food banks? Why are there oh, so I just, many uh, Canadians? I, we don't have time. I'm sorry, I'm out of time. I have carbon, to let Ms. Collins The carbon in. tax is driving up the cost of groceries and the rebate does not cover it and the Liberals know that. The only quick point I make is that Mr. Harper uh, didn't meet with premiers from 2009 as to 2015. Tax, he still refused to meet in the same vein. Uh, Ms. Collins, the last word is to you. Uh, you don't you are fully supportive, it sounds like, of what the government is doing. You just want them to strengthen things. Why, why do you think that they need to then meet with the premiers? Do you, would, would you not see their point in trying to have them adhere to what the Supreme Court laid out they are allowed to do? First of all, I wouldn't say I fully support what the Liberals have been doing. We've been pushing them to do the right thing. When You've it been comes supporting to them in every single matter of confidence. I mean, we have a confidence and supply agreement, yeah. which... You keep the government in power. We actually force them to deliver on pharmacare, on dental care, on, you know, reducing our emissions on uh, providing low-income heat pumps. We are actually forcing the government to deliver for Canadians. And we have to drag them, screaming and kicking. Wait a minute. Um... If you recall, this is what I asked everybody to remember. Earlier, she was saying they've done a terrible job in the environment. All their policies suck. But now you're saying, well, we forced them. Well, if whose all policies your, were they? <laughs> if all the policies suck, well, then whose fault is that? <laughs> like, if you're it's, the only ones that are quote unquote forcing them, it doesn't make sense. Like, well, and it's this just is ridiculous. This is the problem that Jagmeet has put the NDP in, right? They put them in this position where they're trying to criticize the liberals. But they can't. Right, because they've been supporting them for the past two years. Right. So they can't say, well, you know, they haven't done this and they haven't done this. and they haven't. Well, that's, that's your fault. So then vote against them. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's Ridiculous. Just, it, 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 it sounds like the definition of insanity because, you know, they're saying one thing, but then, you know, they vote with them. And, you know, then they criticize the conservatives. But, and, but it's like, well, you guys keep them in power. The conservatives aren't keeping them in power. You guys are. Yeah, the conservatives are always voting non-confidence. Do it. It takes uh, strong negotiations. I mean, you're at press conferences together. It doesn't look necessarily <laughs> like you're cookie taking. We're not screaming, but okay. okay. I mean. Honestly, you can see the kind of legislation that they initially tabled when it comes to uh, the Canadian Environmental Protection Act or, um, you know, even their first uh, kicks at the can on um, the climate uh, accountability legislation. All of these we've had to strengthen. We have to, you know, unfortunately, they always have to be forced into doing the right thing. Canadians right now are facing a climate emergency. We've seen wildfires, extreme flooding, Smoke I choking the people. And we have a cost of living crisis. And we. Hey, if you didn't hear what Andrew Shear said, he said the carbon tax is not going to stop any of that. And he's absolutely right. This is the point, And this is what he raised earlier. If we're going to get serious about this, then you have to treat it as a global issue. You can't treat this as a Canada only issue. Period. We need support for Canadians. Okay, and I, so, have to, I have, I'm sorry, I'm out of time. You, like five seconds. I'm okay. Literally four minutes over already. We have <laughs> one party who ignores the climate crisis altogether and the other one who's using it as a political wedge. We need to unite Which you Canadians. Up. I just have to say that. <laughs> Zing. Get her, Vashi. Zing. Amazing. And, but this is the thing, right? And this is, this is, this is why I like Vashi because it doesn't matter who you are. If you're talking crap, she's, she's going to tell you. So the NDP is like, well, you know, you know, we have we have one party that doesn't believe in climate change. We have one party, you know, is doing this. Yeah, but you're supporting them. Right. So why are you supporting them if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing right. or what you want them to be doing? They're doing such a terrible job, but you're keeping them in power. And this is the problem, right? This is the problem. I did find one thing interesting in this whole discussion, though. What's that? Andrew Scheer didn't talk about the NDP at all. Because they're irrelevant. We saw the latest polls. Right. But the, he didn't criticize them. He didn't He didn't say anything about that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I mean, does a lion criticize a flea? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's insignificant. Their, their main competitor right now is the liberals. They have to get the liberals down low enough that when an election is called, the conservatives can win not only with a majority, but a super majority. Well, if the Liberals and the NDP aren't careful, the main competitor for the Liberals after the next election is going to be the Bloc.